Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. Welcome to week two of my summer blog series, which is themed around one pattern four ways. And in case you missed week one, it, this year it is centered around the True Bias Ogden Cami, which is what I'm wearing just now. So all the subsequent weeks, this being the first of the subsequent weeks, I am gonna show you different separates that you can pair with the camisole just for different looks. And hopefully it gives you an idea of how you can kind of build up your wardrobe, but make it really flexible as well and versatile. And also just mix it in with things that you might otherwise have in your wardrobe that aren't necessarily handmade as well. It might just be things that you've bought in the shop. So. Um, I've got another really lovely versatile pattern that is great for mixing and matching and it is the Tilly and the Buttons Marigold. So this pattern is a jumpsuit and it also has a trouser version as well. So it's the trouser version that I'm gonna be focusing on in this video and then showing you different ways that you can pair it with the camisole. So the design of the trousers are that they're lovely and easy fitting over the hips and they've got an elasticated waistband and some darts as well. So it does, does help to give some shape because they're quite high waisted. And then they've got some really lovely slash pockets, of course, can't go wrong with some pockets. And then they sort of taper down to be quite slim at the ankle. So they're just really kind of lovely shape and really, really comfortable to wear as well. So the pattern recommends that you use a drapey fabric, so like a visco viscose or a rayon or a crepe de chine or a lightweight sort of chambre fabric something that's lightweight basically. And for my version, I have chosen this really gorgeous viscose crepe and it's got this um, lovely pattern on it as well. So if you saw week one, then it's the same fabric as the camisole, the one I'm wearing just now. Um, so yeah, that is the fabric that I chose and I think it just works really well with this pattern. It's got a lot of movement in it. It's got a lot of drape, so it's just gonna sit well where it's, you know, it's gathered at the waist because it's got that elasticated waistband. So in terms of the sizing, I chose to make a size three, which corresponds roughly to a UK 10, according to the pattern. And that's what fits my body measurements. But I'd actually made these trousers a couple of years ago and I found that the crotch length was really quite long for me. It just meant that they were like really high waisted, like right up beyond my belly button. And when I sort of pulled them down to like my natural waist um, height, then the crotch was just like sitting too low on my legs. Um, so based on that, version of them that I've made before, I decided to reduce the crotch length. So it's really good because on the pattern pieces, there there's a line that goes across the crotch front and back. And that is what that is the line that you can use as a guide to either lengthen the crotch or shorten it. So if you're shortening it, you're just like overlapping at that point. Or if you're lengthening it, then obviously you would lengthen at that point. So based on the version that I had made before, I decided to take two and a half inches out of the crotch height um, so that's like the distance between the bit that sort of sits in your crotch and then the waistband at the top. Um, and then you just need to remember to do that in your pocket pieces as well because the line sort of goes through the pocket pieces but there's a line on the pattern for that as well. So it's, it's fairly sort of obvious where you need to do it. Um, and then just to make sure that I got it really nice and even, I used my quilting ruler to do it because it's got just a nice grid that helps you to sort of make sure it's even all the way. Otherwise you could just measure it using a measuring tape. Um, I like using my quilting ruler for that sort of thing. And then because I had lengthened it there, I'd, sorry, because I'd shortened it there, I decided to lengthen it in the leg. And again, that was kind of sort of based off of my um, last pair. I just wanted them a little bit longer. Um, I've got a feeling actually that maybe my last pair shrank a little bit, which is why um, they ended up being a bit short, but I thought I'll lengthen them anyway in the leg and then I can always cut it off if it's a little bit too long. But again, there's shortening and lengthen lines that are in the leg. So if you need to shorten or lengthen it, then there's a really nice clear line in the pattern for where to do that as well. So that was the adjustment that I made. Now, in terms of you guys working out whether you would want to do that or not, um, you know, to be like 100% sure how much you want to do it, obviously making a toile is going to be the most reliable way. But otherwise, you can just measure the pattern piece and then sort of check that against your body. So if you measure the crotch length on the pattern and just remember to take off your seam allowances, because obviously the, the, if you're measuring the pattern, the seam allowance will be included. But once it's sewn up, 
that seam allowance won't be there. So just remember to take that off the top and bottom, but then you need to add your waistband on as well. So the waistband's probably about an inch, so you can just, it'll just help to sort of give you a bit of an idea. So once you know that measurement for the size you're making, you can just like hold it up to your body and you know, you'll get an idea of where it's gonna to come to. So that'll give you a bit of a guide um, as to whether you think you might want to take some, some height off the crotch. I've got a feeling that if you were making it the jumpsuit version then you would want that length but I've never actually made the jumpsuit of the marigold um, for myself it's just the trousers but yeah for the trousers I just felt like they were a bit high so that's maybe something to sort of check and just kind of bear in mind if you decide to make it um, and then of course to go with as with the other posts and the series we've made kits as well and um, to make the version that I've made so um, they are limited stocks so I'm really sorry if you're watching this and they've already sold out they just the, the kits do seem to be really popular and um, sometimes we're kind of limited in the number that we can make because of the supply of fabric that we can get we could only unfortunately we could only get so much of this fabric that I'm wearing we really tried hard to get more we thought we could get more and then we couldn't it was, um, yeah some happen sometimes um but hopefully it gives you an idea of what they look like anyway and um, especially made up in a, in a viscose crepe like this now if you did miss week one then i would suggest going back to have a little look at that because i do give lots of tips in terms of working with slippery fabric the actual construction of these trousers is quite straightforward but dealing with the slippy fabric can be a challenge so um, in my first video I went over sort of laying the fabric out and cutting it out and everything to make sure that it all sort of stays straight and it doesn't shift around too much but really you just need to have loads more pins when you're pinning it um, and yeah just kind of take your time with it you just you still be fine it's just like a normal foot on a sewing machine um, and then in our kits we include a finer needle so like we put size 70 needles in our kit so as long as you've got a fine needle to be honest you could probably get away with an 80 but um a 70s just you know it's a fine fabric so 70s good for that and you know just normal thread so everything else is kind of normal you just need to sort of mentally prepare yourself for the slippiness of the fabric but it does give you a really nice pair of trousers at the end um so in terms of wearing it with the actual cami then here i am wearing it with the cami that's in the same fabric so you can see that this kind of gives the illusion of a jumpsuit when you wear them both together um, and again apologies that we've not got any more of this fabric if you missed buying a kit in this in the fabric um, but hopefully it gives you an idea or just you know some inspiration that you can but with two separates you can create a jumpsuit look which is cool so then it looks like you've got a jumpsuit on but then each garment's sort of versatile and that you can mix and match it with other things in your wardrobe and um, so it's just almost like a sort of cheats way to do it and it gives you more combinations of outfits um, and then this is me wearing it with the um, navy version of the cami that I made. So this is using one of the Atelier Brunette viscose crepes, um, which is another really beautiful fabric, really lovely for this um, style of garment. You could actually use the Atelier Brunette viscose to make trousers too. It's, it's um, I, I think it's 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 thick enough in that sense, like it's not see through. So you could make the marigolds in the Atelier Brunette um, fabric if you wanted to. Um, but yeah then you can sort of see what it looks like as a kind of separate outfit so you've got the contrast and plain top and then the trousers on the bottom um, and so I'm, I'm wearing it with my wedges here but I've seen I've seen people wear it just with like little flats or sandals would look cute as well so it's really nice kind of lightweight summery outfit to have so that is my week two finished of course there's a blog post that goes with this video so I'll link to that in the little description of it and it's got um kind of just like notes from what I've been saying in the video and more pictures and then of course links as well so there's links to the kits that we've got um, and then some fabrics too so you can have a little look at that if you want to find out more and I'll be back next week with week three and um, I really love I've got two versions of something to show you next week and I'm like really excited about it might even be my favourite week although it's hard to pick a favourite because I have loved making all the clothes and combining them all together um, but yeah just make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't subscribed already so then you don't miss the next video um, but I hope you have a great week guys ask me any questions if you want to as well in the comments and um, take care and I'll see you soon bye <music>